Okay, this week tackling the theory and the daily plan. The commentary is really your chance to analyze your own assessments. It consists of two parts. First of all, the justification of why you chose the assessment format you did for each section of your paper pencil version and a whole pro and con analysis of your alternative assessment. What's good about it? What's bad about it? What did you try to do to make it good? Second thing is an overall description of measurement issues that describes how you try to maximize validity and reliability while at the same time minimizing bias within your assessments. You'll address each version of the assessment, paper, pencil, alternative, under each type of validity, reliability, and bias, and I'll show you an outline of that in a little bit. Now the justification is really about you justifying your assessment choices. Some things to remember about this. Um, the burden of proof is on you, and you should make sure you're thorough, right? Basically what I'm looking at when we talked about why we make the decisions we did way back in the beginning of the semester, about we're always comparing things of quality versus time. And time falls into three categories. Time to create, time to test, and time to grade. And the biggest investment is typically the time to grade. So you want to keep that at a minimum and only increase it when the quality of the information is that much better that justifies it. So as you go through each section, whether you chose an essay, matching, multiple choice, or whatever, you should have had a reason why you thought that was the best way to do it. You balance quality versus the time requirements. Now, when you're going through this, right, you need to make sure you do the same uh, for the alternate assessment as a whole. Um, you know, when we talk about our assessment choices and formats, matching multiple choice and so on are our typical formats, but an alternative assessment or performance assessment is also an assessment choice. So I want you to go through and tell me why was it a good thing that you did that. Uh, Popham in the chapter, Popham chapter 80, goes through a list of criteria, authenticity, uh, generalizability, scorability, and so on. Uh, they're also in the notes in that video. Talking about those might be a good idea. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Now, again, the burden of proof is on you. I will not be reading into things. Uh, if uh, you don't say something, there's no reason for me to believe that you possess the knowledge or belief uh, that you might assume that I'm thinking you have. It's complicated that way. So if you're thinking something, you have a reason, make sure you write it down. But don't add fluff. Uh, don't just write meaningful things because when you add a bunch of fluff, it tends to get kind of wishy-washy and really erodes the evidence that I have for your ability to use these concepts and apply them in an authentic setting. Um, I can't really help you with any of this, so you will have to rely on yourself, uh, your classmates, and you can ask me some general questions and I can point you in the general direction, but that's about it. As far as some good examples, uh, these are posted on the D2L site. I'm not going to go through this in much detail here, but the length of this is a good guideline for the justification phase. Uh, make sure you mention the goal and the pros and cons and how you try to balance quality versus time. Some bad examples, uh, either not mentioning the goal, just giving me some generic stuff that has nothing to do with the project itself, doesn't really tell me a lot about what you're thinking or what your thought process was while you were making these decisions. Now, when we're talking about the overall description, the second part of this, you have these three categories of validity, reliability, and bias. They fall into subcategories. Validity, you have content, construct, and criterion. Criterion, remember, is predictive and concurrent. Uh, you have your five types of reliability, and then you have the types of bias that we've talked about. Um, the way I'd like you to organize this, now you don't have to, but it works really well, is to create a section, validity, and then 
talk about content validity and say in the paper and pencil assessment, we tried to maximize our content validity by dot, 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 dot. In our alternative assessment, we dot, 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 dot. Move down to the next topic, construct validity. In our paper and pencil assessment, we tried to dot, dot, dot. In our alternative assessment, we tried to dot, dot, dot. And so on with the other types of validity, reliability, and bias. This is never more than two pages single spaced. It's usually just a page single spaced. So you, you don't have to go into an incredible amount of detail. The issues are general. Um, and apply to almost every kind of assessment. And I will say that every type of validity, reliability, and bias issue we talked of will be relevant for your particular assessment, whatever you're doing. Uh, and so I'd like you to keep that in mind as you go through. Dig deep, push yourself, enhance your understanding. Remember that this is the major final piece of evidence that I have for you about what you know about validity, reliability, and bias. So if you didn't like right, the grades, we've kind of added in a few new things about this and we're talking about making sure we're assessing things the right way, making sure that things are in alignment, making sure that our goals are being assessed, and so on. So keep that in mind and be thorough. I cannot give you help on this. If I did, then I'm not giving you the right kind of task that I need to give you. I will, however, give you some feedback after you submit it, and if you want to do some kind of revision, you can. Again, the feedback won't be terribly detailed because then I'm giving you too many hints, but I may ask you to revisit some topics and so on. And I will tell you how many points you award or what my current estimation of your ability in each area is. If you have any questions about this, please send me an email. I can always uh, post something to a discussion board, respond to you individually, um, or talk about it again at our, our final class meeting, uh, which is coming up this next weekend. The daily plan is the other thing that we need to do, and we've talked about this before. It's not rocket science. It's just an exercise to make sure that you're developing the right habits for keeping things in alignment. The requirements are four days of instruction, three days of lessons, so break lesson one and two down into three days. The final day will be a day of integration. Each day must include, one, the goal that's targeted for that day, two, relevant standard or standards, three, a description of your instructional plan, and four, a description of your assessment plan. And each of these should be bulleted according to your goals. So if you're hitting three goals on one particular day, give me three bullet points uh, for instruction and for assessment. An example looks something like this. This is also on D2L. All right, I have my goals targeted here. I'm not going to give you the standard because your project is very similar to the science example that we looked at in class. Um, and me giving you the standard would basically just give you the answer and a lot of you would just plop that in there. And that's my fear. So it's something that you should do. Go look at the standards, make sure you're familiar with them, at least in a, in a broad sense. Then I go through, right, I have these three goals I'm targeting, my bullet points for how I'm going to teach, my bullet points for how I'm going to assess. And, and really that's about it. There's nothing up to it. You just have to do this for each day. Remember that Day four, though, is an integration day where you are really focusing on the overall unit goal and integrating lessons one and two together. Well, there are materials up on D2L for extra support. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email and I will get back to you as soon as I can.